Hey guys, wanted to quickly talk about why I'm not a big fan of this strategy you're hearing all over the internet, the burr. Hey man, I'm like so cool because I burr my deal. Stands for buy, rent, rehab, refinance, and some other R's in there. Buy, rent, rehab, refinance, repeat, rinse. I think this is a great strategy if you're a little bit lower net worth, maybe under a quarter million dollars net worth. Here at simplepassivecashflow.com, we mainly work with higher net worth, higher paid professionals to build their portfolio, get them up to a credit and status and beyond. But when I first started, I didn't have any net worth. I was working my engineering job and I was buying turnkey rentals to just slowly build my net worth. The first property I bought was in 2009 and I grew my portfolio to 11 in 2015. And today I have over over a few dozen apartment buildings um, totaling over 4,000 apartment units today. But how do you get there quicker, right? How do you accelerate it? Because when I was doing my investing, you know, I bought my first property in 2009, you know, it was like watching grass grow. I moved out of turtle's pace. I was able to save up a lot of money, which helped me um, from my day job to a tune about maybe 50, 100 grand a year because I lived on the road at work and I didn't have a place to, to stay in. I was super cheap eating ramen noodles, washing my car in the rain, all kinds of crazy things that I try not to do these days. But you hear about this burst strategy, right? And the theory is you buy a distressed property, you might have to pay all cash to acquire the property. You put in the rehab and then you go and rehab it. Then you refinance the property for that higher appraisal amount. And then you are able to a lot of times extract a lot of your initial equity and then some and potentially be in the property for nothing down and possibly even make some money in the turn. And that's a buy and hold rental and you repeat the thing. You know, put money in, take it all out, no money in. It works every time. Be cool, burr. Now here's some of the issues I have with this. You know, first of all, if you're not living in a area that cash flows to begin with, you're likely to be doing this remotely. Or if you're in the state of Washington, California, Hawaii, New York, Boston, Washington, DC, these types of primary markets that we typically do not invest in because the rent to value ratios don't make sense in these areas. And if you don't know what a rent to value ratio is, go to my website, simplepassivecashflow.com slash RV to learn all all about this very important fundamental for to be able to cash flow and to run your numbers properly. So for a lot of people doing these burst strategies, you know, you might be living in Hawaii, California, Seattle, and you're doing this remotely. And I think that's where I see a lot of issues arising. Now you're working with people and having to wire over large sums of cash to be working with people you maybe you've only had lunch with once or you maybe you only had a phone call with. And yeah, maybe you've gotten them through referral, but you know, you're wiring over large sums of money and and you have very little recourse should they go rogue on you or should they not perform the work you're paying for. When the strategy goes off without, without a hitch, it's great. But I haven't met, met too many people that are willing to come out and open and, and admit that their relationship got strained after a while and somebody ran off with somebody's money. So I don't really like to the idea of sending over large sums of money to just some random person. Of course, when you do this, you wanna be setting up the right draw schedules to be spacing your money out as certain deliverables are mean, being made. And this is where what drives me crazy. My professional background is being a civil construction engineer. My professional job was managing contractors and managing scope schedule budget. This was my profession. I still don't want anything to do with this with single family home rentals and burrs. And it's crazy to me that there's all these people out there running around trying to do this. And this it is totally outside of the realm. Number one, this is more of a blue collar construction type of activity. And you got people who are computer programmers, accountants, doctors trying to do this stuff. It's just outside of your area of expertise. And when you're outside your area of expertise, you really have to scratch your head. Is this the right thing that you should be doing? Is this the highest, best use for your time? Now, if you're making under $50,000, $60,000 a year and you don't have that much money, it may be a good use for your time. But for a lot of my clients that are high paid doctors, lawyers, engineers, certainly making over six figures a year, this may not be a good use of your time. Now, let's go back, assuming that this the 
construction goes out on without too much of a hitch. There's not any unforeseen conditions, which is all about what a construction engineer, construction manager's life is about is managing the unforeseen conditions because they will come up and it's just an opportunity for the contractor. There's a reason why they call them con for a reason to increase the pricing on you. And oh, by the way, as a remote investor, you're not able to verify any of these work. Sure, you could get an inspector, but the inspector is not going to inspect every little thing. After all, you're only paying them a few hundred bucks to do this for you. So let's just say you put in all this money, the, the construction went off without any issues. Now here's where another problem arises is now you have to go to the bank to get that property appraised and to pull the equity out via a new cash out loan. Now the bank isn't quite aligned with you on this. The bank, they're in the business of making loans that are better for them. <laughs> And this may come to fruition through lower appraisal rates, or maybe they just might do a switch and bait on you. Your lender friend may just change the terms. This happens all the time where you may not get your money back out. All in all, let's just say everything goes well, but look all the time and the headache that went into going and doing this. Was it really worth it? Now, again, it comes down to your highest and best use. If you are lower on the pay scale and you don't have that much money, this may be an option for you. You. But for a lot of my clients that are higher paid, you know, even though they're younger, they don't have much net worth. I normally have people start off with a simple rental property, maybe even a turnkey rental to just get started, especially if they're going out of state where they can't keep people accountable physically. Now, if you want to learn more about, you know, turnkey rentals and how I did it, check out my first few podcasts. There are more about that back then when I started my podcast back in 2016. Today, obviously, I'm investing more as an accredited investor in syndications and private placements. But I think the first few podcasts would be a great listen if you're kind of getting started. Uh, at least learn the numbers like the rent to value ratio, where to buy, things like that. And then also check out my guide on rental properties at simplepassivecashflow.com slash turnkey. And if you want some more of this content and submit whatever questions you have below, I'm going to be going through there and answering your questions on the fly. And I might even make a new video if you guys have any questions. And I'm just here to kind of help you guys out and get people who are hard workers out there that were just misled by all the financial dogma of go to school, get a good job, work at said job for 40, 50 years. There's a better way. And if we work together, we can do, we can get you financially free too. Do me a favor, smash that like button, subscribe, share this with your friends. Yeah, ask whatever questions you got. See you guys. Bye. Brrrr! Brrrr! Brrrr!